If you are changing the oil in a Lamborghini, you're gonna need 19 quarts of oil. And if it's a Ferrari, you can save a little bit of money because it only needs 16. Now those are exotic cars, so you might expect those high numbers, but fortunately for regular vehicles, something like a Camry, this one just uses five quarts, and even a full-size truck like a Tundra uses just eight and a half quarts. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do an oil change in a vehicle that needs almost 14 quarts. It's not an exotic, and it's definitely not a Ferrari. It's a Mercedes Sprinter van. And this is my friend's vehicle. This one's been heavily customized out. You could even live in this thing if you wanted to. Now, even though it's got all this extra stuff, this is still just a standard Mercedes Sprinter van. And if you think it looks familiar, you might be right because Amazon uses this same van to make its deliveries. And you're probably thinking the engine inside this thing must be huge, but in fact, it's only a three liter engine with six cylinders and it is a diesel motor, but it still puts out under 200 horsepower. To get started, we've just got to pop the hood and now we can take a look into the engine. And even though this is a van, it's kind of like a truck in the sense it's so high up, I'm not going to need to use any type of a jack, ramp, or anything because I've got about 18 inches of clearance right under that oil pan. And because I'm going to be draining out about two and a half gallons of oil, I can't use my regular container to collect it. Instead, I'm going to use this big open tub. I think I bought this one at Tractor Supply. This is perfect anytime I'm doing coolant changes or something that generates a lot of fluid. And once I got that 13 millimeter drain bolt out, the oil could start to flow. And you're probably thinking that oil looks terrible, but on any type of diesel motor, that's very typical. It doesn't really matter how many miles you've got on it, the oil is always gonna be jet black like that. Now with the oil draining, I'm gonna loosen up the oil filler cap, and that's gonna help air flow through the system. The only reason I didn't open it at first is because I was so afraid that oil was gonna shoot out about two feet away from the drain pan. Now I need to move onto the oil filter, and the good news is it's on the top of the engine. And to make getting at it a little bit easier, I'm gonna remove this piece of the air intake and you don't need any tools, it just on snaps. The Mercedes likes to do things differently and I own all sorts of oil filter wrenches, but I didn't have the right one for this vehicle. This one uses an 84.4 millimeter oil wrench. And this is the same cartridge filter design that I've got on my Toyota Tacoma. So all you need to do is get the wrench in place, give it a twist and it should easily unscrew. And once I got it loose, I could just use my hand to unthread the rest. But a trick if you've got your filter on top of an engine like this is to not remove it all the way. You want to unthread it until it's completely loose and then just leave it there. And all that oil in the filter cap and the filter is going to drain right through the system back into your pan. If you yank that thing right out, you're going to leave oil and drip it all over your engine. And I know that black oil looks really bad, but if you've never worked in a diesel before, this is completely normal. Now we can remove the old filter element and we've got to remove two O-rings. If you've ever seen me do the oil change on my Tacoma, you've only got one O-ring on that system, but Mercedes uses an additional smaller O-ring on the top. And you can certainly use a small screwdriver, but I prefer to use this pick. You just want to be careful to not damage the housing. Now the filter cartridge here is a genuine Mercedes and the brand might not make a difference, but you want to be careful of one thing on a diesel engine. This filter element is made of a type of synthetic fabric. Some cheaper elements use paper and unfortunately those can rot apart inside the system and then cause you big problems down the road. Now I've just got to install the O-rings and you want to dip them in some type of an oil to lube them up before you put them into the engine. And with that larger O-ring, you've got to be careful. You've got to make sure that sits in the little channel on the housing itself. You put it in the wrong place, you can still assemble it and then you're going to have leaks. This is the same type of system on my Toyota, except you've got this smaller O-ring that you need to put on before you can insert it back into the engine. With everything looking good, I can screw this one right back into the motor. And on this engine, you can actually screw the entire thing in by hand. I actually was able to bottom this cartridge out, so I'm not even going to bother to use my socket wrench to tighten it any further. Now we've just got to reinsert our drain bolt. Unfortunately, whoever sold in these parts did a really good job. They even included a brand new Mercedes crush washer. This one looks like it's made of copper, so I'm going to thread this one right back into the drain pan, and I should be torquing this up, but I just cinched it down until it felt like it was the correct tightness. If you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a huge fan of these oil extractors, but this one is a brand new model that I wanted to try out, and it's going to work perfectly to get this oil out of this container. But this Mighty Vac pump is a really cool trick. First, you're going to suck up as much oil as it can take and fill it up, but then you can flip a valve and now that pump works in reverse. It can pump the fluid out into another container. And this one doesn't need any type of an air compressor. You just pump that handle up and down. You can either suck fluid out or pump it someplace else. Now we just need to add our oil to the engine. And because this thing is up so high and I'm standing on a stool, I pre-opened all these containers to make the job a little bit easier. 
And that funnel I'm using is awesome if you're working on a Toyota because it threads right into the filler cap, but on this Mercedes it doesn't fit, so I've got to kind of hold it in position while I'm pouring the oil. And now just repeat the process 12 more times. I'm not going to add the full amount of oil because I want to make sure that I can check it and then I'll top it off as needed. And these engines do require special oil. Now he opted for this fancy Mercedes stuff and it is just 5W30, but the real key is what's in it. Now this one meets some Mercedes standard, but regular oil brands are going to say ESP if they're going to be certified to work with this engine. And from the factory, this thing didn't even have a dipstick. It's got an electronic way to measure the oil, but you could buy this thing as an accessory. Unfortunately, it just goes into an existing hole. And with everything looking good, we just had to start up the engine and check for any leaks or any type of problems. This is what it looks like on the dashboard to measure your oil. Now we were running a little bit low, so I decided to top it off and I used about another three quarters of a quart. Now I just took it for a quick drive to make sure everything was running right and that I didn't have any leaks when I got back. I've also learned to check my oil again once I get back because sometimes after that first ride, the oil level can fluctuate a little bit and it's just a good idea to make sure you did it correctly. And even though personally I'm not really much of an RVer, this vehicle is definitely cool to drive. It's also a 4x4, so you should be able to go anywhere. Unfortunately, I'm going to have a chance to really check this thing out. He's going to be traveling for his job, and he wanted to get some power upgrades and other equipment installed in this, so it's going to stay with me at least through most of the summer. And I will be sharing those videos in the future about the power upgrades, but if you want to learn more about this van, maybe get a tour of the inside, leave me a note in the comments, and I can put that in a future video.